the top headlines of the week. European court decision upheld on immediate release of Enola Fatoulia. The ruling party already has 1.5 million votes. Prevention of statelessness discussed in Azerbaijan. Authorities fear fair competition with opposition, says Isa Gambar. Budget should include additional social welfare. Socialist International discusses regional conflict. The European Court of Human Rights ruling on the immediate release of Enola Fatoliev has been upheld, despite an appeal made by the Azerbaijani government. The journalist lawyer, Elchin Sadagov, told Objective TV that the judgment was issued on October 4th. The court website states that this is a final judgment, made under Article 44.2 of the European Convention of Human Rights. In 2007, Fatuliev, editor-in-chief of Realny Azerbaijan and Gundelik Azerbaijan newspapers, was sentenced to eight and a half years in jail for threatening terrorism, along with other charges. Two years later, in December 2009, 0.223 grams of heroin were found in Fatuliev's possession while he was in prison number 12. A second criminal case was opened against Fatuliev in the Garada District Investigative Department, and he was sentenced to an additional two and a half years imprisonment by Judge Ismail Kalihov on July 6, 2010. The court charged the journalist with possession without intent to sell in an amount exceeding the limit for personal consumption. The journalist appealed against this decision. On April 22nd, the European Court of Human Rights had decreed that Fatuliev should be released immediately and that the Azerbaijani government should pay 27,822 euros to Fatuliev in compensation. The Azerbaijani filed an appeal with the Grand Chamber of the European Court of Human Rights regarding this decision. Fatuliev is recognized as a prisoner of conscience by local and international organizations. There is a necessary legal basis, and there are political conditions for holding democratic, free, and fair elections in Azerbaijan, said Deputy New Azerbaijan Party Chairman Ali Ahmadov on October 13th in a press conference on parliamentary elections. The New Azerbaijan Party has successfully carried out a signature collection campaign. 112 out of 114 YAP candidates were registered. At the same time, YAP didn't nominate candidates in 11 constituencies and thus paved the way for other parties and neutral candidates. YAP has exceeded the minimal limit of 62 candidates required to participate in elections as a political party. Thus, YAP earned the right for free airtime in public television. However, if no other party or bloc gains this right, YAP can reject this right, Ahmadov said. Ahmadov says that having over 500,000 party members paves the way for history. The total number of voters is about 5 million. Usually, 40 to 45 percent of the population, or 2 million people, vote in the elections. If every member of YAP brings two more voters with him or her to the voting, there will be 1.5 million votes for YAP, he said. Ahmadov also commented on the cooperation declaration signed by three opposition parties from Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia. He accused Musavat leader Issa Gamber of violating national interests. Now the question is what brings Issa Gamber and the Armenian national movement under the same interests? That any mutual cooperation agreement usually has its targets. Whom does this cooperation declaration target? Moreover, Ahmadov commented on the visit of Dashna Kutsun representatives to Azerbaijan and said that people's diplomacy is acceptable in case of national interests are followed. The declaration signed in Potsdam, October 7, 2010, by Musavat leader Issa Gamber, Georgian Republican Party leader David Utu Pashavla, and Armenian National Movement Management Board leader Aram Manakian, focused on the right to life, personal liberty, legal parity, property rights, and a free market economy, the election of government in free and fair elections, and transparency in state management. Thank you.
United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and Council of Europe, in cooperation with the Azerbaijani government, conducted a roundtable on the prevention and reduction of statelessness in Hotel Europe on October 15th. The execution of law and citizenship in Azerbaijan, the reasons of statelessness in the country, measures aimed at prevention and reduction of statelessness were discussed at the roundtable. International conventions and Azerbaijan's obligation in this field were the focus of attention. There are a lot of people in the world without citizenship. A large number of people cannot register their children. Their rights to study, to live, to travel freely, and to pass borders are violated. There are millions of people living in poor social conditions who don't have citizenship. It is impossible to solve this problem without the participation of the states. We can cooperate with states and share good practices. Azerbaijan's granting of citizenship to 250,000 people dismissed from Armenia and Uzbekistan is good practice, said Arun Salad Nagarman, the UNHCR representative in Azerbaijan. According to Salad Nagarman, there are positive initiatives to address the problem of stateless people in the world. The issue on transferring citizenship from mother to child by birth and granting the right to life until citizenship is granted is being discussed at present. These issues will be discussed on the 50th anniversary meeting at the UNHCR at the level of ministers in Geneva on December 2011, said Arun Salah Nagarman. Millions of people in the former Soviet Union, the Balkans, faced a dilemma in 1990 when they had to choose citizenship, and these problems still persist. Azerbaijan hasn't joined the European Convention on the Reduction of Statelessness in 1997. Although Azerbaijan hasn't joined the convention, it should be open to its principles. The process of accepting citizenship should be open and transparent, noted Council of Europe Secretary General Special Envoy Veronica Kotek. Center of Legal Aid for Migrants Head Alobset Aliyev said that according to reports from the year 2007, there are 2,008 stateless people in Azerbaijan. However, the real number is bigger. There have been many legal violations in the registration of candidates for Azerbaijan's parliamentary elections and the election campaign thus far. These claims were voiced in a joint press conference held on October 12th by Ali Karamli and Issa Gambe, leaders of the Azerbaijan Popular Front Party Musavat political bloc. The Aliyev regime fears that a struggle can result in an inevitable defeat and therefore admits mass law violations. The regime inflicts the biggest blow on the Azerbaijani Popular Front Party Musavat bloc, the main rival of the regime. The regime's huge fear includes numerous law violations. For instance, we can recall the non-registration of a number of the candidates from this bloc, Musavat party leader Issa Gamber said. The regime has total fear and total fear sparks total law violations. Of course, Azerbaijani Popular Front Party Musavat bloc will take all relevant measures against law violations. Election commissions didn't register half of the candidates of the Azerbaijani Popular Front Party Musavat bloc. Specifically, 25 candidates have been registered up to now the same number of candidates failed to register as candidates. Documents of another 41 candidates are being considered at the moment. If the regime prevents the registration of six more candidates and doesn't fulfill the complaints of non-registered candidates, the bloc will be deprived of free airtime in TV and radio channels, Azerbaijan Popular Front Party Chairman Ali Karim Lee said. Despite the unofficial emergency situation applied in the country, despite the fact that none of the opposition parties are able to carry out campaigns, the authorities admit that there is an opposition in the country who can defeat the current ruling regime and its parliamentary candidates. They fear a fair competition with the opposition. It shows their moral and political weakness. That's why they wish for elections without alternatives. Kremlin also said that the oppositional representatives receive limited signature sheets. People collecting signatures and those signing for the opposition candidates have been pressured, and the validity of the signatures were examined by the police and the housing management office employees. Kremlin added, that the bloc will first appeal to the Central Election Commission and then to the court regarding the decisions on the refusal of registration. It is possible that the issue can be taken to the Strasbourg court as well. The bloc is planning on holding a mass protest on October 17th, regardless of the government's decision on permission for holding a protest. The Economic Research Center held a press conference on its final report in the Ambassador Hotel on October 12th. The project is being financed by the National Budget Group and the U.S. National Endowment for Democracy. The report was based on the state program on poverty reduction and sustainable development from 2008 to 2015 and the state program on development of the pension insurance system from 2009 to 2015. The report also included the state program on employment strategy from 2007 to 2010 and the laws of the Azerbaijan on addressed social benefits. The report also covered shortages in the state pension system, the distribution of social benefits citizens with low incomes receive, and the competitiveness of the local economy. The global crisis had a negative effect on employment in Azerbaijan. 
3,037 jobs were cut in 2008, 8,747 jobs in 2009. It's become clear that those who lost their jobs were largely middle-aged, educated people. According to the experts, high social allocation of funds can lead to tax evasion. Economic Research Center experts prepared several recommendations for resolving these issues. Baku hosted the Regional Meeting of Socialist International in the South Caucasus and Black Sea region on October 11th. Secretary General of Socialist International Luis Ayala gave an opening speech and said that the participants will discuss the peaceful settlement of conflicts as well as the coming parliamentary elections in some CIS states. The Yerevan meeting of June 2010 launched a dialogue on the Karabakh conflict settlement. Of course, the adoption of real decisions on conflict settlement depends on governments and states but the favorable environment for adoption of these decisions should be formed by politicians, and in this regard, Socialist International can contribute to this process, Ayala said. OSCE, Minsk Group, and international organizations cannot make progress because they want to return Karabakh to Azerbaijan. Nagorno-Karabakh has gained independence two times. Karabakh has never been a part of independent Azerbaijan. It was a part of Soviet Azerbaijan. This is not a conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan. It is a conflict between Karabakh and Azerbaijan, said Kiril Manoyan, deputy chairman of Armenia's Dashnak Sutyun party. Armenia occupied 20% of Azerbaijan's internationally recognized territory. Over a million Azerbaijanis became refugees and IDPs as a result of their Armenian invasion. The Armenian occupation is still going on. The conflict has inflicted a heavy blow on democracy, human rights, and the socio-political situation in the region. I don't believe that Armenia has benefited from the conflict because the socio-political situation in Armenia is very bad, said Azerbaijani Socio-Democratic Party Chairman Araz Alizadeh. The meeting attended by delegations of the nine CIS states, as well as observers from Sweden, Greece, and Hungary, started after a three-hour delay. The delay occurred because of problems in the documents of an Armenian representative in the Baku airport.